Sounds slightly too. Hello, I am Tara, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook, along with my mom, Jill. Today we are making... Wait, along with your mom, Jill? Oh, oh, you made the cookbook with your mom, Jill. <laughs> Today we are making cheese enchiladas on page 265 right here. Now, don't blink because this recipe will be done so quick. Our cookbook is 35% off right now livingonadime.com. All right. Now, normally I make this in an eight by eight pan, but I've already made my for made for TV. So this is going to be a smaller one. Take your pan. Usually I do an eight by eight size. This is a loaf pan. Spray it with your cooking spray. Then you're going to take your tortillas. We like corn tortillas around here because Sorry, this is the same recipe as the South Korean Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Um, because I'm gluten-free, so that's what we use. I pulled too many. All right, so all you do, now, we like American cheese. You can use pepper jack and mozzarella and cheddar. You can use cheddar and um, uh, Colby. You can use Mexican cheese. You can use any kind of cheese you want, Okay. You might come down just a bit, Jack. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tortilla, slap your cheese on there, put on your sour cream and set it in your pan like that. You're gonna go say, Tara, you didn't roll it. No, I didn't because I have a secret for that, okay? Now, our Dining on Dime cookbook right now, guys, 35% off for a pre-order sale. For those of you who did not hear the announcement, thanks to the crisis that's going on with all of the shipping mess our books got stuck in the middle of that now these ones are from mike so i'm going to add a few onions you could use chicken you could use beef you could use anything you want okay um so would you use beef with the sour cream yeah it'd be really good yeah i bet i never never thought about it oh that yeah before. um and our books got stuck in the whole shipping mess that's happening. So now it looks like they're going to be coming around um, November 30th, they're telling us. They should be arriving in Seattle. What do you say, tomorrow? Tomorrow. They should. They actually might be November 15th at this point. So. You're, don't say anything. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, so they're they're supposed to be landing in Seattle tomorrow, so we'll see. We get them thirty five percent off right now. Pre ordering. All right, we are very sorry. We can't. We have no control over the delays. So how I roll my enchiladas is I stack them all in here, and then can you see this, Jack? Come in and let's see if they can see this. I want everybody to see this. Really good. Okay, Jack's Dave is sick today, so Jack is our the, cameraman. Doing good, Jack. Kathy, they are corn tortillas. These are corn because we're gluten free. Okay, so now what I do is I stick them all in like this. See how they're all standing up? See, like that? They're all standing up. Then I roll one over and lay it down. See how I do that? Because the other ones standing up keep holding the other ones in place. See how that is? This is Tara's cool method of rolling enchiladas that I've never seen anybody do before. Just like that. Okay. Then what you're going to do. Oh, wow. That was a good save. We almost had a Tara <laughs> moment. Then you're just going to pour your enchilada sauce all over the top. And you're going to take your cheese. Now, um, I use... Cheddar cheese on top and American inside, but you can do whatever you want. And since I'm just short a little bit on cheese, um, I'm just going to add some American. And then all you do is throw these in the oven, guys. Oh, my goodness. They are so stinking delicious. Mike just loves it when I say that. Then cover them for the oven and bake them like so. And then you have your luscious sour cream Whoa. cheese enchiladas right there. 
That I was will. Fast. If you want, you can put more onions. I left onions off of these because they're going over to mom's today. Um, but there is what they look like. Okay. And Mike will taste test. Ooh, ooh. Jack is almost okay. Very good. Oh, Jack is good. You got this down. Yum. Okay, I need one of those. Is that delicious or what? Yep. You're going to send one over here, right? And to send it to moms, I save my containers from my um, uh, deli meat, and then she doesn't have to return them. So isn't that easy? Man, you did that in six minutes. Sour cream enchilada, and I was yakking too. This is like a three-minute meal, guys. You put it in the oven, let it bake, go do something else, get yourself... Might relaxed um and that's all you gotta do dining on a dime cookbook page 265 if you want you can make the spanish rice that's in here to go with it i Yum. usually put them both in to bake together you can add corn tortillas with honey or salsa as a side dish and then you can add any type of fruit or vegetable that you want. Usually when I serve Mexican food, I don't do a vegetable. I serve like fruit, like sliced apples or sliced oranges, something like that. And you got dinner in less than five minutes worth of work. So isn't there a guacamole recipe in there? Yes. Guacamole is in volume two. Oh, we put that on them too before, haven't we? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You can do guacamole if you've got them. And all of that so there you go 30 percent off right now we're going to talk about the rising prices here real quick i wanted to say sarah i keep forgetting to say the last couple of shows i got your card thank you very much and um this was from oh yes jude thank you jude for the wonderful card and after Three years of waiting after we hit 100,000 subscribers three years ago. <laughs> Look what we finally got. <laughs> you have to be careful with it because you're supposed to treat it like it's pretty impressive looking. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, three years we have waited since it's been three years since oh. we hit 100,000 subs. You have to hold it closer to the camera so people can see what it is. It is our silver play button. We actually hit a hundred thousand subscribers three years ago in December. So when you but, get yeah, when you get a certain milestones, then YouTube gives you a plaque like this. And this is for a hundred thousand, although we just hit two hundred, didn't we? Yeah, we actually just passed two hundred. <laughs> so they need to send us another silver one. Yeah. <laughs> to go with that. We passed two hundred thousand this week. We've got two videos on prepping going viral. How to um or I mean Let's see, what was it? 10 foods to, or 10 things to buy before hyperinflation hits. And uh, was it 10 or 15 foods that will last forever? Michael put the link in for those. So we've got those two videos going viral. So everybody's subscribing. Thank you so much for all of you oh, joining sorry. us what and for sharing? all of you sharing. Whatever, did you say I'm supposed to share these? Yes. Uh, we had some, we had somebody was asking about can you use block government cheese? Yes, yeah, so it's really good with that. Yeah. So you can pretty much. I mean, is there any kind of cheese you can't really use? Not really. I mean, maybe Swiss cheese. You maybe wouldn't want Swiss That'd be cheese. Be kind of gnarly, huh? Well, I mean, it probably wouldn't be bad. I guess I don't know. I've never made it with Swiss cheese, but I would say. Um, I, okay, this is weird. As I'm getting into Facebook here, there's a picture of our bud, Tommy Alderman, with a suit. <laughs> it's kind of funny seeing Tommy with a suit. <laughs> and I've never seen him with a suit. That's hilarious. Wow, Galena says, first time <clears throat> catching a live. And, Welcome. And Debbie said, look at me here on time to watch you live. So Aww. yay. For all of you Thanks. who are just joining us or if you don't get a live shows very often, hello. Of course, for everyone who's always here, hello. 
<laughs> yeah, so we just hit 200,000 subscribers on Sunday. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate all of your all your support. Support. Yeah, and encouragement and all that yep. good stuff. We greatly appreciate it. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Okay, I got myself up here. So a couple things. Here. Can I have one of those? Yeah, after the show. I'm going to be gone after the show. Well, so you're going to be eating while you're supposed to be working? I won't be back till like 8 o'clock. She's going to make me wait. <laughs> um, so we had there you go. a few things before we get started on the other thing. Cheryl says, I like your new haircut, Tara. Uh, oh, thank you. And... Um, Let's see. A number of people are wondering. Well, first of all, a couple, a bunch of people are asking how are like Donna Sinesco. Hello, how are things in Snowy Sheridan? A lot of other people are asking about. I don't snow. know how are things in Snowy Sheridan. <laughs> um, um, okay, so several people asked about the snow. I had news agencies asking me yesterday to use my footage. Of course, I promptly said no. What? But. <laughs> For those of you who missed it on Facebook, I showed our front yard. We got about, I would say, 16 inches of snow. Yep. Um, they said yesterday evening it was 13 inches, and then we got a few more this morning. So anywhere from 15, I would say 15 to 16 inches. And Mike shoveled three miles of driveway. Yeah. So our, shovel. Yeah. Our driveway is probably, what, 25 feet wide? Probably, Probably 25 feet wide and at least a full block long. A full block long. <laughs> yes. I mean, maybe a block and a half, really. Yeah. And Mike shoveled all of that himself. Plus, he did the neighbor lady's driveway. <laughs> I was feeling pretty good about that. Actually, I just, I was, I was thinking, man, I guess I don't have heart problems. Because <laughs> I was feeling great. I, after yeah. a little bit, I was like, okay, maybe I should go check on him, make sure he's not laying with a heart attack on the ground or something. <laughs> so I Man, don't know. Imagine what I'll do if we get like a little four wheeler and a blade. I'll um, be doing the entire neighborhood. The whole neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> we have 666 people watch. Oh, 667. Thank you, whoever added that one. <laughs> now that was disturbing me. <laughs> and Tracy Davis still on the men. Not, not quite there yet. Uh, uh, I hope you're getting better. Dave has been sick for three, over three weeks now. We're working on week four. He's been on antibiotics. He's still not doing better. Probably have to take him back to the doctor tomorrow. And a lot but, of people ask, oh, did I just mention that Cheryl said she loves your new haircut? Yes. Looks really nice. Yeah. And also there were a lot of questions about your mom's house. Now that you so, get into this topic for the day. All right. So our topic of the day is, are you worried about rising prices? So, um, I will briefly, briefly tell you about mom's thing, and then we're going to get into rising prices. So I think today mom's been in the house five days. She got totally moved in Friday, and I think today she's wishing the house would burn down. I think she's about had it. It has not been a very good move for her so far. And yeah, it's actually been pretty rough. And so she's been cleaning and cleaning. The house was just filthy. I mean, it was gross. She had to clean like the bathroom floor six times before her rag was white again. And then today she discovered she's been having this issue where there keeps being, it looks like dirt in the water when she's cleaning. And she thought maybe she had accidentally dumped some dirt in her bucket. She's like, what in the world is going on? What's going on? Well, today she turned on her kitchen faucet and uh oh i don't have a picture my phone's over there she sent me a picture and she said i think i'm gonna go throw up she has one of those faucets that's hooked on to the thing hooked on to the whatever and there was just black mold just apparently because mom's been cleaning so much she's worked the mold out well it's not out it's like stuck in the end and she's been washing and drinking all of this moldy water she said i just want to throw up so then she's like okay i think i'm gonna go do a load of laundry she opened up the washer there was a whole bunch of dog hair caked in there and gunk caked in there and she can't reach the faucet on her sink so we've got to move her sink forward for her so it's been one thing after another and i think right now she wishes her house would burn down so 
Oh, well, and then she lost power. But then she'd have to come back here. I don't know. <laughs> then Sorry, she, mother in <laughs> Then during our storm, of course, she lost power. She about had a complete breakdown when that happened. But it was only down for five minutes, wasn't it? No, it was down for a couple of hours yesterday morning. Was it? Oh, oh okay. yeah. I thought was... you said she was down and then she's up again. No. Hmm. That last night she was. So it was down for a few hours, which half of Sheridan lost power yesterday. So she wasn't the only one. But... Somehow you know, we didn't, and I'm amazed because our trees, a bunch of them, yeah, broke. we we have a whole bunch of cleanup we got to do, and so she um, she's very discouraged right now. So if you guys could pray that, well, don't pray that her house burns down. But pray that she, I'm gonna go check on her later. Make it through. We're gonna take her some enchiladas, and I don't know if that'll do anything. But do I need uh, to pack those up? Do I need to pack those up before I go? Uh, we can do it, okay. and. Um, so she's very, very discouraged right now because she just wanted to move into a nice, clean home that she didn't have to worry about anything or fix anything. And it's just been one thing after another. So she's really frustrated with it all. So anyway, and yes, we probably could have hired someone to clean, but, you know, they wouldn't have taken care of the moldy faucet. They wouldn't have taken care of the nasty, you know, washing machine. So it's stuff like that that, yeah, they could have, I guess, done the surface stuff. But, like, the Lazy Susan was just stained with filth. I mean, it was just gross. So she had to try and figure out how to line the Lazy Susan with, you know, liner. And, of course, it's semicircle, so that was a job and a half. And when you're not feeling good, you know how that goes. And she totally failed her prepping <laughs> because... She just moved in five days later, so when she lost power, she couldn't find her candle, she couldn't find her matches, she couldn't find her flashlight. She had no backup. She has no backup heat at all, and she was worried because all of her hot water heater and her furnace, her hot water heater mostly, all of that is out in the garage. So she was really worried about her pipes freezing in there. So anyway, it's not going very well. I'll just tell you the truth. So. Anyway. So Barbara says, how did the inspection not see all this? They don't look for cleaning issues. No. And they also yeah. don't look in a lot of places like, where was it? That thing pulls out from the sink? Yeah. Like ours says? Well, and it's, it's stuck in the head of the um, faucet. And so you can't really clean that. Because inspectors are mostly looking for like electrical problems and foundation things and stuff like that. Actually, so. tonight, you look and see, Mike, if the head... See, it's, it's like this is what it is. See if this Jack, whole can screw, see I don't know. Hers is similar to this. It looks like this might screw off. Hmm. I wonder if you could go, I wonder if you could check and see if you could screw it off and put it in, in bleach water and clean it for maybe. Hmm. See, I don't know. So... Anyway, she did get $250 from the people for um, cleaning, and we were going to hire somebody, but it didn't quite work out to hire someone. And, you know, like I said, they don't cover stuff like the faucet and the washing machine anyway when you hire someone. So she's just frustrated and discouraged, and I don't blame her. And so anyway, that's where we're at. And guys, inspections don't do much. Like for us, the refrigerator rattles really bad. They didn't catch that on the inspection and we weren't going to keep this fridge anyway. So for me, it's not that big of a deal, except for right now where I'm shooting videos and I have to pull the refrigerator out, unplug it, push it back in so I can get around the kitchen and pull it back out and plug it back in. So that's a pain in the butt, but we're going to get a new fridge. So, well, and the, um, when did your mom move into her home? Friday. Friday. Yeah. Um, the thing about the inspectors is they're not, super super observant i mean they do catch some things sometimes and sometimes they catch things that aren't really problems mm -hmm. and they're not super knowledgeable like they have a certain they have a requirement for a small amount of training but i can't remember what that requirement yeah. is but like for instance they at jill's old house years ago it had these old light switches on it well, immediately they wrote down that the wiring was all bad but they had replaced all the wiring it was just old switches and so there's Just nothing wrong with that. Just for the aesthetic. So yeah. sometimes for reasons like that, they they get the wrong idea. Other times they just don't notice things that are important. Um, yeah. Because there were some things they, no they they noticed some, pointed out some stuff to us on this house, but there are a few things that I noticed that weren't on there. 
that we're still going to have to deal with. Yeah. But they're not super urgent. But well, and if, part of that is when you're when you're living in the house, you know, you don't notice these things. And when you're new moving into a house, you notice all these things. And because like at one of our houses, the people were really mad because apparently it rained into the bedroom from the patio door that went to the bedroom. We lived in that house almost three years, three years, two or three years. Good. Yeah. And we never had an issue with rain running in that door. And well, so sometimes it's just fluky things or, you know, whatever. So well, and there's some things like here, the refrigerator making noise. It's possible it wasn't making noise when the inspector came through. It's yeah. possible. Because like it's um, quiet right now. But it's also it is quiet right now, but it's also possible that the people that lived here before us just didn't hear it. Because sometimes if there's something that goes for a long time, you mm -hmm. just get used to it and it doesn't yeah. really stand out unless the power turns yeah. off. And then you notice how quiet the whole house yeah. is. So I think she wants to just sit down and cry today and I don't blame her, but anyway, well, she'll get through it and <laughs> keep going on. But anyway, all right. Rising prices. So Mike, Mike will go over there. So that the, the catastrophe of having her son-in-law show up will distract her from the crazy. <laughs> all, all right. right. So if you guys have noticed on YouTube, I have been asking a lot of questions. And several people are getting suspicious and they're like, well, I'm not giving you that information. Google's already got enough information on me. Guys. That's where we got it from. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I am not uh, prying into your lives. I am not collecting data on you or anything. Well, I am, but not in that way. What she's trying to do is I figure don't, out. I don't. Yeah. It doesn't say who when you go and vote on the polls, it doesn't say who voted won't, what. I don't see any of that information. If you make a comment, I see who it is, if it has your name. But I don't even know who you are anyway. I mean, you know, there's 3,000 Mrs. T's out there and Joni Smith. So I'm not collecting information or anything. What I'm doing is after we went to our... Uh, conference, our YouTube conference, and after our class that we've been taking on learning how to do YouTube better, I'm just trying to figure out what you guys want for videos and how I can help you more. So like when I asked, where do you drink your coffee in the morning? Do you drink it at Starbucks or a coffee house? Do you drink it at McDonald's? Do you drink it from a convenience store? Do you make it at home? Do you make it in a Keurig? Like 80% of my viewers said that they make it at home or make it in a Keurig. So you know what that tells me? I'm going to stop lecturing you about going to Starbucks and I'm just going to start giving you make at home coffee recipes. So if people say they've been around for 14 years, are you going to stop telling them to get it together? I am because they got it together. So if they've if already they got it together, years, then they're not yeah, if they don't have it together after watching me for 14 years, they <laughs> there's no hope. So... <laughs> So that's all I'm doing with these questions in the community tab, guys. It's just so that we can serve you better and give you better content and content that will help you more. Because if 80% of you were working moms, then I would cater more of the videos towards that to help you with easier dinners for working moms. But guess what? Only 20 some odd percent of you guys are working moms. So I know... I don't need to do those kinds of videos as much as I do for the other 50% who are stay at home moms or retired staying home. So that's all I'm doing with that. And people one, are seriously worried about that. Yeah, they you know are. What? They're actually, paranoid. if you're worried about that, then when you get a when you get a thing on Facebook that says, "Oh, what would you be doing if?" or "When you were in school, what?" what what school did you go to? Or I forgot how those questions mm -hmm. are phrased, but there's a lot of Facebook things that ask about mm -hmm. what school you went to or what was your favorite dog's name or whatever. And those questions are likely to be picking actual serious data. Yeah. What Tara is doing is just, we, we when we went to our conference, somebody was asking about that earlier. I think one of the things we got to thinking about is, are we actually giving people what they want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so kind of trying to learn more about who's watching yeah. Will help us so that we're not spending so much time on the things that nobody cares about. Yeah. So. I mean, because I don't want to give you content that you don't want to want to watch. Why waste my time doing that? So, you know, that way I know, like, one of the questions was what kind of recipes you want to wa watch? Well, 
I'm going to go in there. I asked you what kind of um, diets you're on because I keep having the diabetic and the keto and the vegan people. I'll say, I need more recipes. I need more recipes. Well, guess what? Those are like 10% of our viewers. I'm not going to be doing those recipes. So now I can focus on the recipes that the majority of you want and can really use instead of wasting time on things that people don't want. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm not going to ever do it, but I, that won't anywhere be close to being my focus. So what does this have to do Wait, with rising prices? Hold on. Pat said she was making the enchiladas with you. She, just wants, she wants to know how long she throws them in the oven. 350 degrees for 30 to 45 minutes. And one of the person, um, Amanda, I'm new to y'all. Welcome. We're really glad you're here. And then she said, oh, did I see a cookbook? Yes. So I didn't know if you wanted to share that. Dining on Dime cookbook, 35% off our pre-orders right now. We have sold over 500,000 copies of these things. So somebody likes it. But they should arrive in Seattle tomorrow. So we're expecting November 30th is what we're saying. But they may be able to ship sooner depending on how, many, how soon the truckers can get here. Livingonadime.com for that. Now. What does all of that have to do with rising prices? One of the surveys that I did was, are you concerned about the economy? Because if you guys aren't concerned about the economy, I'm not going to do videos on that. Well, guess what? A lot of people are concerned about the economy. Now, they're not necessarily scared because a large majority of our viewers are Christians. And so as Christians, we know that we will always be taken care of. But... This whole thing with rising prices is actually a huge concern for people. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. First of all, oh. our price is rising. Sorry, I was going to say one other thing. A number of people are saying they're not as concerned about the prices rising as much as they are shortages. So you might okay. talk about that too. I'll talk about both of the, them too. Um, <clears throat> rising prices. First of all, I've had several people say when we said in our prepping videos, Michael put a link, don't do it on that one, please. Um, <laughs> that, um, that prices aren't rising. Let me tell you, in December of 2019, no, December of 2020, in December of 2020, you can do it on this end, Jack. On this, in December of 2020, our gas prices in Colorado in some places were $1.67. The average was $1.79 in December of 2020. In January of 2020, it went up to $2.09 or something like that. Now we just came back from Colorado and on our trip, they were $3.79. So, okay, maybe it's not exactly doubled, but like 80, 85, 90%. That's almost doubled, okay? So yes, there are some things like gas that are going up. Food prices, I went yesterday. Lettuce, instead of being its regular 99 cents, is now $1.78. That was a huge jump. It's hard enough to persuade yourself to eat lettuce when it's cheaper. <laughs> Actually, I love lettuce. So that is the first time I have ever paid $1.78 for lettuce. But here's the thing. You can still get some really, really good prices. And let me show you right here. One of my viewers, Kathy, hello, Kathy, sent me her ad for this week. And you can even, she even got the date and everything. So you can see it right here. We have chuck roast for $3.99 a pound. Chicken leg quarters for 59 cents a pound um cucumbers two for a dollar right there can they see that jack yep. right there okay so you can still get food at reasonable prices milk was still three dollars a gallon bread was still 88 cents at my walmart when i went yesterday or day before yesterday um Tomatoes were still like a dollar, what was it, dollar thirty-four something a pound? I can't remember, somewhere around there, which is the normal price. The only thing I noticed that actually went up in price was the lettuce at the moment. Now, here's what I'm trying to say with all of this and start collecting questions, dear. 
right now you can still get food and items for a good price. Our store, we live in fairly rural. I mean, we're in a town, but everything has to be shipped in Wyoming. And so it's not like we live in California where I can just grow whatever I want all year long, like more than half the country, probably three quarters of the country. So right now, the prices really aren't rising that much. Now, you may be having some shortages, maybe. But this is where you're going to have to be flexible in what you're doing. So like the other day, I found pork and beans for 25 cents a can at Walmart on clearance. I found the huge jumbo boxes of frosted flakes for a dollar on clearance. I found the big, um, they were called jumbo taco shells, El Paso taco shells, 10 a 10 pack for 50 cents. I bought everything they had of all those things because I stocked up while they were cheap. Those are items that we use all the time. I love pork and beans. Love the recipe in dining on a dime for pork and beans. Love the recipe for tacos in dining volume two. And so those are things that we eat all the time. So you can still find really good deals. Now, you may have to adjust what you're eating. So you may not be able to buy boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You may have to get the 59 cent leg quarters on sale and bake them in the oven and eat that instead. You may have to learn a very, very simple way. Guys, we've got like five videos on how to cook a roast. It is super, super simple. I mean, making a roast is probably the easiest meal you can make ever because it's like two minutes to prepare. And then you just put it in the crock pot, instant pot or the oven and just let it bake slowly all day long with two minutes worth of work. And so the point that I'm trying to make is you may not get what you want, but you there's still food and it's still very affordable at the moment. Now, do I think it's coming? Yes, I do. I think our nation is just on a downhill trend and I think it's just going to keep going. I think we've hit the top of the roller coaster and we're just going to go down and stay down. I honestly don't think that we'll ever come out of it. But you just have to do the best you can. And one of the biggest things is getting your mindset in um, how can I cope with this? How can I, what can I do instead of this? You know, and fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, because mom only had $500 a month when we were growing up to raise us. She had to make do like 90% of the time. She didn't just go out and buy a new purse. She didn't just go out and buy new shoes. You know, you may have to start shopping at thrift stores, shopping at yard sales and getting those things that you can't get. I know people who have told me there's no way I would ever wear used clothes on my body. Or put them on my kid. I would <laughs> never put used clothes on my kid. Are you kidding me? You go to a hotel, they, they literally would go to a hotel <clears throat> regularly. This person would go to a hotel regularly, yet they wouldn't go buy clothes at a garage sale or thrift store, bring them home and wash them and put them on their kid or themselves. Some of those things you're going to have to get over. So we are going to start doing, you guys are going to start seeing a lot of videos from us. Um, about how to make do meals that are going to be easy to make with things that you already have on hand and how to cook them at home to give you some more ideas. So um, that's one of the that's one of the things that we're going to actually start doing a lot more of. Pure Pondering says Safeway still have gallons of milk from two fifty nine to four ninety nine depending on the brand. Yeah, I mean milk was ninety nine cents a gallon here last week. One thing that there are a couple of things that even though 
some things are definitely going up and shortages are a big problem for reasons that we've been learning recently more than I think a lot of other people. Um, but certain things are less likely to go up than others, like like basically when I want to say raw foods, uh, basic foods like rice and beans and commodity type things um, where the prices are going to be going up the most are going to be prepared things, right? Things that you buy mm -hmm. that are already partially prepared. Um, well, I don't know. Meat and milk will probably go up, but no, right now it's not. Some things, yeah. Well, meat is one of those ones that tends to go up, especially when uh, there are a lot of things going on to kind of make that industry, um, to kind of press, put pressure on that industry, which means that they produce less and supply and demand means that then the price is going to go up unless the demand goes down. So, and the other thing is that even when things are expensive, you can still find good deals. And I think right now, the, if you just walk into a store, a lot of things are going to be expensive right now. Mm -hmm. But you can look and see as far as prices, if you kind of shop around and keep your eyes open, you'll be able to find deals. And a lot of the stuff that Tara talks about a lot of times, I'm going to let you finish on that, but uh, are setting things up so that you can buy the things when they're on sale as much as possible. Mm -hmm. because you can't necessarily control if the prices are going to go up, but what you can control is like when you buy them and how much of them you use and how often you do it and how much you keep on hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so part of it is taking the money you have now and instead of spending it on frivolous things or going on vacation or that kind of thing, use it to stock up and get your pantry stock up. Now, some people say, well, I just don't have the money to stock up. What am I supposed to do? You do what you can Okay, so first of all, no one is going to be able to be prepared for everything unless you're like my friend Rob at <laughs> Little House Off Grid. Lives completely off the land. Who's, who lives complete? Well, no, I mean, he does it for food. They set up a garden, but he lives in a tiny house with a wood burning stove and they're pretty self sufficient. But 90% of America is not self sufficient or it's not possible for you to be self-sufficient. I mean, if you're living in an apartment complex, you're not going to be able to have a cow and chickens and a garden. So you do what you can. And this is the biggest point that I want to make is right now prices are still low. So go ahead and do what you can. If you can only afford an extra $5 every week, we have a free $5 printable. Michael put the link in right now for you. Wait, for what? $5 stockpile printable, living on a dime. Where is that link? Well, just search it. Um, and um, just use that list and find the foods that you eat the most and just every week start stockpiling a little bit. One week buy tuna, the next week buy roast beef. Just do $5 stockpile. Our stockpile is fine. And... Um, <clears throat> Just keep every week doing what you can. Don't just sit there and say, oh, I have no money. I can't do anything. Almost everybody has a dollar to buy one extra can of food. So do that. I, when we moved in, had my freezer was totally empty. When chicken went on sale for $1.49 a pound, I went and bought 100 pounds of chicken. You can go see that video. Just look. Uh, like three weeks back on our YouTube channel, I went and bought a hundred pounds of chicken to refill my freezer so that instead of spending $400 on chicken, I only spent $149 and I haven't had to purchase chicken for six weeks now. And I have at least another, oh my goodness, probably maybe four or six months worth of chicken in my freezer because that's all we eat is chicken. Well, not all, but I mean, we eat a lot of chicken. So just take and when you find your 25 cent pork and beans, like I did two weeks ago, I save that money. So instead of spending, I spent $2 on pork and beans. Instead of spending $8 on pork and beans. And I took that $6 and I stocked up on something else. Does that make sense? And so don't get overwhelmed. Don't get frustrated. Do what you can and get started. And then you're also going to have to just accept that this is our new reality. 
you can holler, you can fight all you want, but sometimes that's just your re new reality. When the Stark Margaret crashed, <clears throat> what was it? 98, no, 92 years ago. Nobody had any idea that morning that by that night they were going to have a new reality. This is, I think, going to be a lot harder than the 1929 depression was. Why? Because back in 1929, I can't remember, I saw, saw a statistic the other day and I forgot to look it up before the show, but it was somewhere between like 40 and 60% of the population was farmers. Well, now it's something like 2% of the population is farmers in the United States. So it's going to be a completely different ball game the next time the depression hits here, when it hits here. And so you need to do what you can, but you can't sit and fret about it. You can't sit and worry about it. You may just have to accept, well, wait a minute. I can't have a second helping of food this time. I may just have to eat smaller portions. We may not be eating steak. You know, I've never just had steak all, you know, for my lifetime. I, I've had it when I've done an elimination diet. But, <clears throat> you know, you may not be able to eat things like chicken breasts. You may have to eat thighs and drumsticks. You may have to roast it in the oven. You're not going to be able to go out to eat. So those kinds of things are going to be your new reality. And those are the types of videos that we're going to start working on to help you guys with that. Okay. All right. Now, one, one thing when Tara says, <clears throat> if you just get, you know, a few things at a time, <clears throat> you'll be surprised how fast that builds up. And as when she talks about a new reality, basically what she's saying is there are some things we just can't control. And if we can't control them, we have to learn how to do the best we can within those, within that situation. Yeah. <clears throat> and there are, I mean, there are things you can do to try to influence the situation, but in general, if you can't control it, then you try to figure out what's the best way to make it all happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's the idea is not, not panicking, but just thinking, what can I do to make sure I'm prepared? Mm -hmm. And some people were talking about how long should I be prepared, but I would just say, I would just gather and the bigger a buffer you can make up. I mean, there's a certain amount, there's a certain point where it's not very I mean, practical, but I would get up to a year. <clears throat> if you can get a year, I know that some, gives you a lot of opportunity to be flexible. Yeah. Some Mormons, Latter-day Saints, they have three years. I have some personal friends that are Mormon and they have three years worth of food. I would say I would work your way up to a year if you can, I mean, and this doesn't have anything to do necessarily with just the economic crash. I mean, you don't know when you're going to get that thing going around and you can't work for a month. You don't know when husband is going to fall off the ladder and, and have to be out of work for several months with back injury. You don't know when you're going to lose your job. You don't know when there's going to be a hurricane like Katrina. You don't know when there's going to be a flood like we had in 2013. And some of our personal friends could not get back to their house for nine months. So, well, and I know in prepping, you'd say, well, they couldn't get back to their house. What good does that prepping do? Yeah, for them personally, they couldn't get back to their house, but their neighbors literally got stuck in their houses for weeks and weeks on end. And so you never know when you're going to have a situation like that or like in Kansas, one time a tornado came town through town and literally obliterated a town to nothing. And all the outlying farmers had to drive an hour and a half to go get groceries then. So you never <clears throat> know when you're going to have these types of situations. You might have actually said this because I was distracted by comments, but we noticed during certain emergencies some of our people, some of our friends did not have enough supplies to get their family through Friday and it was mm -hmm. Wednesday. So if that's where you are, you're, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. It's funny because Jennifer here says people don't seem to, Jennifer Weber, <clears throat> people don't seem to be taking preparedness seriously. <clears throat> I don't mean a garage full of food, but some people don't even have enough to last a few weeks. I'm not yeah. expecting an apocalypse, but emergencies, job loss, God forbid, all those things can happen. Being prepared helps people remain common emergencies. Yes. 
And if you are a person who relies on the fact that if there's an emergency, uh, like uh, the government, the Federal Emergency Management Agency might come in and help. They, if you look on their website, it says you should be prepared <laughs> because it says that they may not be able to help you for three or four weeks. And in certain circumstances, it could be a lot longer than that. Yeah. And if there was a big catastrophe, they, the government wouldn't be able to help you. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is what we've always kind of figured is you can't, some people want to stockpile food for the rest of their lives. And that's no offense if you're one of them, but that's a little bit silly because you just can't make it last that long. And uh, the main thing I would say is if it's, if it lasts long enough to give you the ability to think and figure out how to solve the problem where you are, when mm -hmm. something unexpected happens, then that's yep. that's kind of what you want. All right, expiration dates. Everybody's asking and, about expiration dates. Yeah, it will. Can, canned goods. Guys, the expiration date on canned goods is a freshness date. Now, I when we were moving, I had canned goods that the expiration date was 2013 that we were eating before we moved, okay? Some had gotten pushed to the back and I didn't get them rotated out because I just missed them. I opened them up just out of curiosity and sure enough, they were perfectly fine and we were able to eat them. Canned goods last 10 to 15 years, closer to 10, but definitely five to seven years. Canned goods are fine past their expiration date. So do not throw them out. <clears throat> Someone said something about, do I donate my expired food to food pantries? No. I, I well, they don't take it most of the time. Yeah. The majority of them will not take expired food. Now, having said that, I had a family member, my aunt, who would get food from the food pantry and it was all expired. So it may just depend on your food pantry. I don't know. But every time I've donated or talked about doing that, which I don't do anymore. I don't donate to food pantries at all anymore. But um, anytime I've heard of that, they don't accept expired food the majority of the time that I know, but call and ask. But flowers, so flour, it ex on the expiration date, you've got about three to six months before it starts going rancid on flour. Canned goods, five to 10 years after the date it it's good uh things like pasta will be three about six months past the expiration date pasta lasts although you can actually go a little bit further it depends on the pasta and what's in the pasta and that kind of thing but pasta could last a little bit you know quite a few you could go three to five years for some things like spaghetti or macaroni noodles um sugar lasts indefinitely if it gets hard just scrape it off with a grater or a knife or something it's just gotten a little moisture in there and it's fine uh honey lasts forever guys go check out my video on 10 foods that never expire that i just put out this week go check that one out because we listed 10 foods that do really well um the other thing is um Let's see. What was I going to say on that? Uh, cereal, the expiration date, I have gone about six months. And some of them have been a year after the expiration date. It kind of depends on the cereal. Oatmeal is um, about three to six months past the expiration date. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Donna, how do you know when flour has gone rancid? It'll, you'll smell it. It'll smell. Yeah. And so the oil in the flour, it, it goes bad and you can smell it when it has an off smell. So you'll, you'll know when it goes bad. Um, let's see. So don't buy foods when, don't buy foods that you're not going to normally eat. So like, I wouldn't go for us and buy sardines. I'm the only one in our family who likes them. Nobody else will eat sardines. I don't put sardines in our prepping stuff. Uh, rice. We eat the majority of our carbohydrate is rice in this house. So I stock up on rice, which by the way, lasts a super long time, like 10 to 15 years. It lasts a really long time, rice does, especially if you keep it cool. 
So I stock up on things like rice. Um, let's see. I answered the rice. I answered the oatmeal. Actually, <clears throat> uh, Genevieve, Genevieve says, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, be kind to others. And while Tara's looking for that, I will say, one of the things that we have always kept in mind in terms of emergencies is we get to know our neighbors and we find out that we have something that nobody else has and somebody else has something nobody else has and somebody else has something nobody else has. And in case of an emergency, um, everyone can share, or at least it's worked that way for us before. Uh, when we were in Colorado, we had a lot of neighbors <clears throat> and we all had something we would share with each other. And uh, when the floods happened then there were times where we were all just checking on each other and especially everyone was checking on the older people who, mm -hmm. you know, might not be able to have as much help. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, another thing, if people laugh at you for prepping, Mara said in New York City, nobody I know is worried about inflation and they're not prepping, but me, they think I'm crazy. So what? Here's the thing about prepping. You don't do prepping to do crazy prepping. You do prepping because you never know when you're going to get sick or lose your job or whatever. And so you just buy things that you already need and use. It's not like you're not going to not use the things. For me personally, I have a whole bunch of extra chocolate chips and cake mixes and brownie mixes and, and uh, condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk, and a whole bunch of that stuff. And you're like, Tara, wait a minute. Why are you buying all that stuff? That has no nutritional value because I'm a cookbook author. And last year when all the crazy started happening, I was in the middle of writing a brand new cookbook and I couldn't get ingredients to finish testing the recipes. So for me, it's a business thing. So I make sure that I have things on hand to keep my <clears throat> business running, which happens to be food. Well, just think of it in the same, same terms. What do I need to keep my household running if something happens and I can't get to the grocery store? I only grocery shop about every 10 days or so, 10 days to two weeks. I used to only go once a month. Now that we're in town and I'm closer, I go about every 10 days. I went last Monday grocery shopping, not two days ago, but 10 days ago. And probably Friday, I'll need to go. Well, I wouldn't need to, but for some recipe testing, I need to go pick, or for some videos, for recipe videos, I need to go pick up some stuff. But I mean, we could easily get by without me going for another week or two. So who cares if everybody's laughing? Don't tell them you're doing it. I wouldn't tell anybody you're stocking up. Just go do it and don't tell them. Well, and the thing is, you're not stocking up for zombie apocalypse, probably. You're just stocking up so that you're prepared. And, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't no reason they need to know somebody i forgot who it was earlier said that she had gotten two little purses for a quarter each and people were laughing at her <laughs> i was thinking good job yeah but you will i guess the thing i think is funny about that is some people comment but then when there's a problem like tar was saying uh, somebody said in new york city nobody's concerned or doing anything well that's fine but when there's some kind of a problem or shortage, then everybody demands that somebody do something about it and give them something. But if you're prepared, you can wait it out. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the main thing. And and again, a lot of the stockpiling is good for saving money. Yeah. Because you're eating stuff that's moving on its way to expiring yeah. and restocking on the other end, and you only have to buy things when they're on sale. Yep. Here's another question we get. Quirky Girl says, unfortunately, the poor can't stock up. I get this all the time. I'm on Social Security. I can't stock up. I'm on. I'm retired. I can't stock up. I'm on limited <laughs> income. I can't stock up. That's a bunch of baloney. My mom lived on $750 a month for 30 years, and she had a very good stockpile because she bought things when they are on sale. Even if you live on $750 a month, even if you're poor, you can still stock up. That's just an excuse. Um, wow. And even when I was living on $300 a month, I still had a stockpile of extra stuff on hand. And I just bought when it was on clearance. I didn't go in and spend $2,000 at one time. It was here or there. But I eventually got a stockpile built up. So that's just not true. That's an excuse. And it's an excuse to not take care of yourself. 
and be responsible for yourself. You can always make a small amount of room to collect a little bit at a time. Yeah. Uh, Lynn, totally off topic. Love your hair. Yes, well, I was you. loving her hair too. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, Sandra, in my area, you need to think what happens if there's a major earthquake and all the roads are destroyed. Yeah. yeah. The one thing is, no matter where you live in the world, there's the potential that something will happen. And it doesn't mean you need to panic or be totally crazy about it. But, you know, in California, there are earthquakes, fires. Unfortunately, you, you can't really do a whole lot about that in terms of, where. well, you can. Well, I mean, if your house burns down, but what if your neighborhood or If or somebody something... else's house burns down, you could help them, yeah. Um, we've, we've seen tornadoes and ice storms, but some places there are all kinds of emergencies that people don't really think about that could happen in your area. And just having some plan and preparation is yeah. the idea. Not to be panicked or worried or think, how can I stockpile enough stuff for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just... Denise says, does minute rice last as long as regular rice? Yes, it does. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's good to have some of both on, I would say. Um, and, you know, I do things like after Halloween, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, we go stock up for the next holiday for candy. That way it's 70, 50 to 75% off and we can get it for cheaper. After Halloween, we go stock up on Hershey's bars and Hershey's kisses so that we can still have Christmas fudge for, you know, a whole lot cheaper than buying it uh, full price. So it's those kinds of things that you need um, to just watch and look for and be on the ball. When chicken was $1.49 a pound, I went there 30 minutes after the grocery store opened up. They had six cases. I bought five. I didn't know they only had six cases till I'd already checked out. I bought five and that was all and it was gone. Well, you know, I didn't intend to, hoard. I didn't know, I mean, this was a big advertised sale. So I assumed they had, you know, 200 cases in the back, but apparently they didn't until after I had already purchased my items. So, you Which know, the okay. chicken. Oh. So don't go in and I don't go in and just buy everything unless it's, I mean, if there's eight cans of pork and beans, I'm just going to take the eight cans of pork and beans, but you know, it's not a matter of having to just go in and buy everything and hoard it and, and get a whole bunch at once. It's getting a little bit at a time after the TP was gone. When that thing was going around last year, every time we went to the store, it didn't matter if we needed it or not. We bought another thing of TP as, cause it was a limit of one. So whenever we went to the store, we got a thing of TP. Well, now we got our TP room and our stock built back up. We moved a whole bunch of TP. We but, don't even you know, use it that much now. Now, because we thing. have the bidets, we don't use it that much. But, um, uh, you know, it's just a matter of we just bought one or two a month extra and our stockpile was back up. So, um, <clears throat> sorry. Susan had a good question. I don't think you've seen it yet. Do you only stockpile when things are on sale or when they are the regular price? Well, it depends. Mm -hmm. If it's like toilet paper really doesn't ever go on sale. I know they have it advertised, but if you really break it down, go see my toilet paper um, video where I broke down the toilet paper prices. Um, but things like toilet paper, I just, when it's in the store, I just buy it the regular price. Things like pork and beans, chicken, beef, those kinds of things, I wait until it goes on sale. 90% of my groceries I buy on sale. And when when there were last or was it in 2020, after the toilet paper debacle, there were times where we were working on a cookbook or something, and we were like, you know, there's not a run on something right now. Maybe we should buy a few extra because we know we need it to be able to produce another cookbook. And there wasn't a shortage of it, and people weren't buying it like crazy. But we thought, knowing that it's something that we are going to need for the thing that we're trying to do, we kind of looked at that. And those things we sometimes bought at the regular price. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, it's when it's on sale. Because one thing, I think Tar mentioned this earlier, but in case you didn't hear it, if you look for something that's a great deal and you have 10 or five, 10 extra dollars and you're like, wow, this is a great deal. And you buy that one thing, then the next time you won't have to buy that thing. And if you can take advantage of a different mm -hmm. thing that's on sale that much, and eventually you end up with a whole bunch of extra money 
available in your grocery budget that you can use for whatever you see that's an amazing deal. And that's where you really start, you know, kicking mm -hmm. in saving money. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the, the debt payoff snowball thing, except it's a, it's a grocery spending snowball thing mm -hmm. where you spend a lot less because you've made it possible to have a flexible part of your grocery budget to always use for whatever you see that you think is an awesome deal that you'll mm -hmm. need some sometime. Yeah. Um, let's see. Somebody on here said, how long does cat food last? I would keep cat food until it's moldy. Like, like dry cat yeah, food? Like, yeah. Yeah. It would last forever. I would give it to the cat. I mean, and I hate to tell you this, but if the fecal matter hits the oscillation unit, the animals are going to have to take a back seat and eat scraps. You know, if it gets that bad. So you may need to do that. Do I buy, do I freeze my chocolate after the holidays? No, because usually the expiration date is two years past when I buy it. One to two years. So there's no, I mean, you can, but I'm sorry. If you don't use chocolate in a year or two, something wrong with you. So <laughs> we eat chocolate within a within the you know, expiration date. Spices last forever. Go look at my video on 15 foods that never expire or 10 foods. And I don't know foods that never expire spices are, we talk about it in there, but yes, um, they might go down in potency, but they last really, really long time. Um, 49 cents. Brenda said, uh, 49 cents a pound for, um, Chicken thighs, yeah, guys, it's still out there a lot. Um, you can stock up on a lot of things still. Um, let's see. Do we eat crumpets here? No, that's not an American food. So, but that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, for those who rely on freezers, I pray you have a backup generator. I don't but I live in a cold climate in Wyoming. So from this point out, pretty much if we lose power, I have until April or May that I could store my food outside and I would be fine um, without a generator. We Actually, do not, that's one really bad thing about this house is we do not have a backup heat source. I would love to have a wood stove um, in case we lose power, but we don't have one. That's our, that's our big uh, what do you call it? Hole in our prepping is we don't have an alternate heat source and it would be really nice to have a wood stove. Heather's asking, when do we expect the cookbook to be available? Well, November 30th is what we're telling people, but it's supposed to be landing in Seattle tomorrow. So maybe two weeks after that, maybe I don't, who knows at this point, but November 30th is what we're telling people. Um, it is 35% off though, pre-order sale. We we knocked it an additional 10% off just because it's pre-ordering and we wanted to give you guys a good deal because we knew you were going to have to wait. So 35% off all our cookbooks right now, including our gluten-free, dairy-free, which people are just loving. I don't know what's going on, but thank you guys who've been sharing our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook on your Facebook pages and all of that stuff. We have been selling and selling and selling our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, and we've only got 200 left, but they're on their way also. When do they ship? Uh, they ship, they said they're scheduled to leave on the 15th and be here. The they're also saying around the 30th, but I think we're going to receive them sooner. Yeah. And, but we're... We're being cautious on saying that, yeah. but we think we'll receive them sooner because I'm kind of watching where exactly yeah. they are right now. So. Tomorrow we go up to Billings to pay the other half. And once that happens, then they're released and they get okay. headed on their way. So, um, bye Joshua. All right. Joshua talks food. He oh, said he had a, Joshua. He said he had a hundred and I forgot how many subscribers he was. Good job, dude. Good guest. job. I was thinking we need to send him a play button on our we, <laughs> compliments of us. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yes. Uh, do we have gluten-free recipes in your cookbook? Yes, I have a gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook specifically for gluten-free, dairy-free. Um, extremely popular. Um, and all right, let's see. What does Pantry Bugs like 
in food pantry. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but if you're talking about getting bugs in your flowers and that, yes, if you live in the South or, well, not necessarily just the South, but Midwest, South, more humid climates, the bugs are worse. You will need to freeze them, put them in um, five gallon buckets to keep the bugs out, something like that. Use diatomaceous earth around your food pantry, food grade diatomaceous earth. Several people corrected me on this. I know, I already knew this, but the bugs walk through the diatomaceous earth and it kills them by scraping up their exoskeleton. I knew that, I just misspoke in my other video. I was tired, I'm sorry. But diet food grade diatomaceous earth helps keeps the bugs down because they walk to, through that. We're glad to know people are paying attention though. So I, I guess. guess when people comment, you know that they're paying attention. Um, Debbie was, you might've already seen this, but she said, what's the most, uh, she says most efficient way to find sales. Do you go to all different stores? But in a different comment, she said, I buy the same list at the same store all the time. Or do you just concentrate on sale items at your store you frequent? So it depends on how much I'm going to save. So if it costs me $2 in gas to drive across town and I'm going to save 50 cents, no. If it costs me $2 in gas to drive across town and an hour's worth of work shopping at the other store and I save $150 because I stuck up on chicken that's $3 a pound cheaper than it normally is, then yes. So just weigh the value of your time and the, the gas to go across. But if I go shopping, like when we lived in Idaho, I had to drive 70 miles each way to go get groceries. When I did, I hit all three stores in town, no matter what, and stocked up. I live here. If, even though the three grocery, all three grocery stores are on my way to and from home, if I, if something's a really good sale at one of the other stores, yes, I'll stop by and get it. If it's not really a big deal, then I'll just get it um, wherever I go. So anyway. Slater Free, do you think you'll, you'll come out with a volume four book? Oh, does that mean gluten free is volume three? I guess. Um, actually, I have one in the works. I just haven't been working on it. We have a five ingredient cookbook that we were working on um, that I started last year that I just haven't been doing it because I've been spending so much time editing videos. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So, oh, thanks Slater Free for the super chat. Appreciate that. All, All right. right. Any other pack, questions? Do you want to pack some yeah. before? Any other questions I can look we have? Um, Looks like, okay. Oh, I downloaded the app Flip and it lists all the, all the grocery stores helps me a lot with shopping and prices. Some, uh, we are, we had an assistant in the past who loved that app and it uh, shows <laughs> if you can look at prices at different stores. So yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't quite hear again what Tara said. <laughs> I married you, right? It's my job to not hear what you say. But um, she tends to have a, like, she likes to buy a lot of things at one particular store, but she keeps an eye on sales everywhere and goes to wherever she gets the best price on things. So not only sales at her own store. Yeah. Yeah. So I will go. Oh, Susan, sometimes it says sometimes it's significantly cheaper if you can get a 90-day supply of a prescription. Check with your doctor to see if they will write the script for 90-day supply. Yes. Yeah, actually, that's another thing that as I was talking about the fact that we can, if you buy a little extra uh, when something's super on sale, you don't have to buy that item the next time you're at the store, and then you can buy something else that's super on sale. Another thing that she, what she said reminds me of is sometimes if you can buy um, – I want to say a bigger quantity, but that doesn't mean if something says value size, that doesn't mean it's going to be a deal. But there are times where I will pay for something that we need uh, in advance. Like I'm thinking about bills and things, but sometimes it's a product we need for the business or something where instead of paying one month at a time, I might pay for three or four months or a year. Uh, and the same thing with like prescriptions and things like that. If you find out that you can save a ton of money by buying a 90 day supply instead of a 30 day supply, then if you do that, you don't have, then the next couple months when you would normally be paying the higher price each month, you can use that money to 
spend it on something else that's going to save you over your normal expenses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, can I turn my gluten-free zucchini cake into bread? You can. You'll have to cook it for significantly longer and watch it. Um, it'll probably take like an hour and 15 to 20 minutes to bake probably. So you'll just have to keep watching it. Put a knife in the center and see when it comes clean. Um, you can do that. Ramona, who asked for that. And how do you happen? How do you determine if you have three or four months supply? Uh, I didn't do a video on that, but just go and look on the back of the package and see what it says for the serving size. So if I buy a 20 pound bag of rice and it says it has 300 servings, then I divide that by the number of people in our house by meals. Then I know that I have, you know, a hundred meals worth of rice servings or 75 meals worth of worse rice servings do the same thing with beans and that and that's how you figure out how many you know well, now some people earlier were saying like they've started eating less and found out that they saved a lot of money and the thing is um if you if you eat more than you really need i think tara's calculating based on how much we need to survive yes more than because like i'm overweight well i probably would have to yeah. learn to eat less if, yeah. if food was hard to get and so that's the kind of thing also to consider is how much do you eat, but also probably would have to cut back if it was, if there was a yeah. crisis of some sort. If you weigh 350 pounds, you're not going to be able to eat 350 pounds worth of food. Or you're going to run out. Or you'll run out. And how to tell how many calories you need. You use approximately the same amount of calories as you weigh with a zero. Okay. So, I weigh 200 pounds, I need to lose 50 pounds. So I eat about 2000 calories a day. Well, I only need to eat about 1200 to 1500 calories a day. If you weigh 350 pounds, that means you're probably eating around 300 or 3500 calories, 3500 calories a day. You really only need 12 to 1500 calories. So go on how much you need to survive not how much you need to sustain your current weight, especially if you're overweight. And it's not going to be pleasant, I can tell you right now. There's a reason why the word diet has the word die in it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. But yes, uh, somebody asked about mashed, boxed mashed potatoes. And I can't remember what the other thing was. Boxed mashed potatoes last a really, really long time. And they're a great staple to have. And uh, minute rice also, they both um, last a really long time. Um, uh, <clears throat> there was something else. Oh, I, I need to go. But uh, Ramona said, can you turn your gluten-free zucchini gate? Yeah, I answered that. Okay. Okay. So we are going to go. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Check out our cookbooks at livingonadime.com. Go check out our other prepping videos, guys. I put out several prepping videos. They're going viral. There's a reason why they're going viral because you need this information right now because being prepared means you're not scared because you're ready for when it comes or if it comes. And if it doesn't come, who cares? You can take a break and just not go to the grocery store. Yep. Uh, so they're only on living on, on YouTube, right? Living on a, so you, yeah, if you're not on, on YouTube. YouTube right now, it's living on a dime to grow rich on YouTube yep. is the channel where you'll find yep. it. I don't if you just, if you come to living on a dime to grow rich on YouTube, Tara has like a five or six of yeah. things about how to prep yeah. and how to save things and things I, that you might've forgotten about. Yeah, I don't put prepping on Facebook because Facebook is just evil and people just literally lose their minds on Facebook. So I don't put any of the prepping on Facebook because I don't want to have to deal with the comments. So, and let me tell you, some of them, they're just evil. They're not just nasty, but they're evil. So livingonadime.com. Have a great night. Bye. We will see you guys next week. See you later. Woohoo. Oh, wait. Oh. I should say. Paula Ramirez, Super Chat 999. Thank you very much, Paula. Oh, we really appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys.